This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. One of my friends has actually tried and says he likes HelloFresh, so yay! Um, unfortunately, they don't deliver to my area. So... <laughs> Looking for an easy way to eat well and save money this year? Cut back on expensive takeout and delivery and get started with HelloFresh. You'll love how fast, easy, and affordable it is to whip up a restaurant quality meal right in your own kitchen. We all want to save money this time of year, but did you know that HelloFresh helps you save money all year round? In fact, HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% cheaper than takeout. With HelloFresh, eating well in the new year can be stress-free and delicious. With over 35 weekly recipes, they have the options you're looking for to help you achieve your goals. Choose calorie smart and carb smart recipes, or even customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading your proteins, or adding protein to a veggie dish. If this has at all piqued your interest and you'd like to try HelloFresh, just click the link below for 21 free meals plus free shipping and try HelloFresh today using the coupon on screen. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the video. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I as always am Rizgrestar and this is another reaction to a death battle, Trunks vs Silver. As always, the link to the original is in the description below. So we have Trunks from Dragon Ball Heroes specifically and Silver the Hedgehog from Archie Comics. So, this is gonna be interesting. Right now, I think that Silver is going to win based upon what little I know of how, you know, how powerful Archie Comics, Sonic, and Sonic characters are. They're just insane, right? Um, but what I need to know is how powerful Dragon Ball Heroes Trunks is. Because I learned through the Gogeta vs Vegito death battle that Dragon Ball Heroes is actually quite powerful. It seems to me more powerful so far than Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super, like the main Dragon Ball timeline. Um, so I'm just gonna have to see how much of that Trunks is actually involved in and what he himself is capable of. And then of course see to what Silver's capable of because I'm mostly basing it off of his universe and not him specifically as a character. I believe my younger brother told me that Silver was at least multiversal uh, because you know, my brother is like a big Versus fan. Um, and so, you know, we, we talk about this sort of thing now and then. Um, and so I remember him saying that, <laughs> just that much about uh, Silver. So, interesting. Um, like, that's already going to be tough to beat, but it's not impossible. Like, multiversal is huge, but it's not everything. So we'll have to see what Trunks has. Um, also disappointed to say that this is not the same Trunks as from Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1 and 2, the video games. And it's disappointing for me because if you didn't know, I'm a speedrunner of, well, both the games, but specifically Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. That is my baby. I've done a lot of, like, routing work on that, and I currently have the record, but that's, you know, I'm not, not a lot of people have run. If you're interested, let me know. <laughs> but um, but it's not the same Trunks, even though it's Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Xeno Trunks, who this is the Trunks that they're using from what I've gathered, is apparently different. So, bummer, because I was like, yeah, I know him. I don't. I don't know him. But that's all I have to say, so with that, let's get to watching. So here we go for a death battle. Trunks versus Silver. Take it away. Trunks briefs. Time cop of the Dragon Ball. He has Zero. red hair in that Silver picture. Silver the Hedgehog, secret freedom fighter from Archie Sonic. What does that now mean? What does red hair mean? May be well known today. Also, Xenoverse. What? From Was that not? Universes. He's whiz and I'm it just—it looks like and the same model. <laughs> analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. All right, let's do it. I'm looking forward to this one. Everyone knows Trunks is the coolest Dragon Ball character. Don't lie, when he showed up to prove Goku was a- Well, yeah, that was really cool. Around, you popped a Shenron in your pants. <laughs> After witnessing his entire world slaughtered by a deadly android duo, and yeah. using his mother's time machine to hop to the past to make things right, Trunks made his triumphant return to his own time period. But for this version of Trunks, that's where things start to get a bit different. When he okay. was intercepted by this Jojo posing fairy chick. <laughs> the Supreme Kai of Time, yep. Kronoa. She watches over all of time in the Dragon Ball universe and was forced to arrest Trunks for his alterations to multiple timelines. So th Welcome they definitely the seem to be using Xenoverse footage at least. Oh, sorry, Dragon Ball Heroes, an alternate universe. No, Xenoverse, where every Dragon Ball story has its own canon timeline. Get a leg of some nerd's weird DBZ. Okay, all of which are included in this totally analysis. Official. Okay. 
Cool. And it rocks! Unlike his more well-known counterpart, this Trunks was made to atone for his crimes against time by joining Inspired a Yu-Gi-Oh card named Tyler? The Time huh. Patrol. I'll give you okay. one try to guess what the Time Patrol does. They patrol but time, they fix discrepancies caused by villains. Week, Trunks is the perfect guy to protect the whole multiverse. He has the usual collection of the Saiyan's key powers, but also a magic sword straight from the Hero of Time. No, not him. <laughs> not him. That guy, yeah. Even with the differing timelines, it's, tappy it's on, I'm pretty sure. like this Trunks has lived all the way through some variation of the Goku Black Saga. Therefore, he possesses all powers the original Trunks has, including the ability to assume the golden form of the Super Saiyan. And gathering key from other life forms to make this ultra huge laser sword! However, he has also performed a divine ritual to unlock godly key within himself, taking oh. on the incredible red visage of a Super Saiyan God. He can go yeah, God, I had no sure idea. Does come in handy when he's That's pretty cool. Demons, like when these weirdos I'm also, Kabura, I'm so not used to seeing realm, Super Saiyan God, because it's always like either Super Saiyan or, it's kind of a um, you know, Lucky blue, for us, just that I actually did forget what the red hair was what at the beginning. useless knowledge have you got for us today? I'm excited. On, dude. Let her speak. Knowledge is never useless. <laughs> okay, so all the major timelines in Dragon Ball Heroes are recorded in tomes called the Scrolls of Eternity. Ooh. Anytime somebody hopscotches through time, another one of these scrolls poofs into existence. There's I've defeated so many scrolls. Problem. There can only be so many scrolls. Once you hit the limit, surprise, you just triggered Cosmic Armageddon. Oh no! It's not even counting all the lesser timelines branching off the main ones. Uh, Trunks it, and Co it makes me happy to see the universe anyway, in this. Trunks and the Time Patrol are some of the only peeps who can time warp without causing these distortions, thanks to unique devices like this armband. Though sometimes a patrolman they never, gets I don't think they explained that in the games. Themselves. That's interesting. Like when Silas tried to rewrite Dragon Ball Heroes, both the world and the game. Oh yeah, did we mention that? The universe is an arcade game in its own universe. <laughs> uh, yes and no. In the far off future of the Xenoverse, the Dragon Ball Heroes arcade game essentially serves as another method of time travel, allowing future warriors to visit iconic moments in the past. So oh. much for preventing the Ragnarok of the multiverse or whatever. <laughs> That's where those lesser time branches come in. They don't count, just because. These machines sure. also send an avatar of the uh, player back in time, complete with an assortment of collectible cards that can summon facsimiles of well-known characters. Mm -hmm. That's right, Super Saiyan 4 Goku is a rare reverse holo now. Trunks himself is an avid fan, along with his disciples Beat and Note. Fun fact, Beat is a descendant of GT Goku. Trunks oh, even funded GT a specifically. Cool style hero switch so he can use his cards on the go. And you thought Trunks was cool before he went full set to Kaiba. <laughs> now, he's somehow made the great Saiyan man look badass. That's how you put polish on disappointment. And I thought that was pretty damn impossible. All these powers, gadgets, and cards certainly came in handy against foes like Mechikabura, but they weren't always enough. Even Super Saiyan 4 Vegito had trouble fighting the Demon King, who hmm. created a black hole to consume every timeline in the multiverse. Wow. Until Trunks broke out the ultimate deus ex machina, the Key Sword. No, not that one. <laughs> that one, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. This epic blade isn't just a sword. It can completely shut down an opponent's powers. And thanks to being powered by Pinky over there, it can summon the power of the Eternal Time Labyrinth. Oh. Which is just really fun to say. <laughs> well, even more fun, it traps targets in the crack of time, a bubble of reality outside all timelines with windows into others. And the key sword was powerful enough to finish off Mechicabra in a single strike. Obviously, this puts Xenotrunks in the upper echelons of Dragon Ball power levels, Apparently. even eclipsing the main timeline's Goku, who could destroy the universe up to 13 times over when he first channeled Super Saiyan God. The same Goku who could push through hits time skips and could fly from Grand Kai's planet to hell in less than a minute. Considering the distance between these two realms He's very powerful. his canon visual model, that would require speeds over 29 quintillion times faster than light. And that was even before going God, let alone getting training from Whiskey. Uh, <laughs> Whis and many of Trunks' <laughs> patrol buddies are just as impressive, like you. Well, the you who battled Demigra in the Xenoverse game when he had control over all time and space, or the you who fought the demon Shamel who threatened the whole multiverse. Or you are technically a canon character oh. in Dragon Ball. Congrats, I guess. Uh, maybe now you can throw that coming home. Default for female real. Majin named Patroller. Oh, on, you know you want to. So the bad guys better watch out. Because Trunks and his time cops will always be there to stop them and protect time itself. Okay. 
Well, <laughs> Silver has a lot he needs to do. Because <laughs> that was um, very powerful. The era of darkness. This savage future has been ravaged by unending fires, giant monsters, mm. ecological disasters, and general dystopia of all kinds. Bummer. But standing against this harsh and bleak reality is a lone hero. A young hedgehog with silver quills named, uh, Silver. So, yeah, comic book silver doesn't sound too different from the one in the video games, right? I <laughs> don't really don't know either it. of them. This is the same comic where all the tales in the multiverse fused together into this monstrosity. The, so they, they fused? For a wild ride. What? <laughs> With no family to speak of, Silver was taken in by the last elders of his damaged world, including the immortal wizard of chaos, Mammoth Mogul. Oh. Silver's goal was to become a knight of Cronus, a time-traveling warrior who could save the future by changing the past. Silver's base abilities include super strength and super speed, though not quite quite at the same level as those of Knuckles or Sonic, respectively. Okay, okay, well, sure, sure. okay, because he's got his own special weapon, Mind Bullets. And <laughs> more, a lot more. Silver possesses the rare power of psychokinesis, mm -hmm. allowing him to move himself or other objects around with just his thoughts. He can move anything from rocks to skyscrapers to entire mountains. But that's not okay. all he's got up his sleeves. Or gloves, he always keeps a warp ring on hand, a size shifting power ring that can teleport him anywhere he likes, even anywhere. other dimensions. And he can access the insights, resistances to corruption, and power boosts many other Mobians can attain with usual power rings. With all this, he was a shoe in for school with the Woolly Mammoth Mage. Thanks to Mogul, Silver got to learn about two other magic abilities he'd soon master. Okay. First up, Chaos Control! Chaos is good magic Mogul to have. pioneered himself centuries ago. This is the stuff Sonic and friends used to shoot pew-pews and turn into super not saying. <laughs> right. Then, Mogul discovered another magic, Cronus Control. Oh. With this, Silver can move through time with very little effort, made even easier thanks to his Time Stone, a gem that governs time itself. After doing tons of research, Bros, Sylvie and Mogul discovered that their shitty lives could all be blamed on just one person. <gasps> Apparently, one of Sonic's own freedom fighters turned traitor and ruined everything. Terrible. What a twist! So Silver set off with a full arsenal to baby Thanos that bastard. <laughs> Only one problem. The Archie Sonic multiverse is complicated. Uh -huh. How complicated barely even cuts it. Jocelyn, how about you take this one? Oh dear. Okay, Archie Sonic's multiverse is similar in scope to something like DC Comics, with multiple extra dimensional layers like the Chaos Force. Okay. There are infinite universes with infinite timelines and infinite characters. Oh, hmm. as if Sonic needed more of those. Including the likes of Mega Man, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and Spawn. Wait, what? Oh great. With the Time Stone, <laughs> Warp Rings, and Cronus Control, no timeline or dimension is out of Silver's reach. Though like bad sushi mixed with vodka, time hopping this way had some weird side effects. Okay. Like decoupling Silver from time. So if he causes a real bad butterfly effect, he doesn't get erased like poor Marty McFly. He just has a lot of catching up to do. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, can you go back to the part about Sonic the Hedgehog meeting Mother <laughs> Spawn? Needless to say, Silver had a hard time figuring out exactly what he needed to do. I mean, even if it was more straightforward, he's not exactly the sharpest <laughs> quill on the hog. Good thing Archie Silver is way more badass than he was in the video games. Okay. He's fought all Good, sorts yeah, of, course. of epic baddies across time and space, like Darth Knuckles oh. and Enerjack, oh, oh, yeah. who stole the souls of every Moby in oh. the world. This guy threw a whole continent at our weed-haired hedgehog. Despite fighting a literal dark god with far more power, Silver won the day by turning evil Nux's own attacks right back at him. Not too surprising. Silver's psychic powers on their own are strong enough to teleport instantly, disrupt any technology, close tears in reality, and stop time from being pulled out of him. Also, according to the Archie Sonic comic encyclopedia, Silver still experienced some version of the events of the Sonic 06 video game. You know, okay. everyone's favorite. <laughs> Including the battle against Solaris, who could eat time, where Silver achieved the invulnerable form of Super Silver. Ah. He has a major boost to match the speed and power of Super Sonic. As Sonic Man, without this supersonic energy, Sonic was already fast enough to outspeed stopped time. Let me say that again. Right. Time was frozen, and Sonic could still move. 
What the hell? <laughs> Naturally, Supersonic and Super Silver should both be faster than this. But as calculating speed requires a factor of time, and this feat removes time from the equation entirely, yeah, that's fair. this means Super Silver's speed is incalculable. Right, His yeah. speed is faster than time itself permits speed to be. That's stupid. That's <laughs> Archie Sonic. Yeah, that's Archie Sonic. That is Superform's most impressive feat, though. There have been a few occasions where the Archie Sonic multiverse has been completely demolished and restored, and each one used the same chaos power Super Silver possesses. Oh. The most notable, of course, was when Super Sonic teamed up with Super Mega Man to counter the Super Genesis wave. Which Lots completely of supers. rewrote all of time and space! Luckily, despite being right at ground zero, the Superforms were immune to the Super Genesis wave's reality warping power, giving Sonic and Mega Man the time they needed to save the entire multiverse. Perfect! Oh no, what about- <sighs> Yes. <laughs> Even spawn. Oh, thanks, Satan. <laughs> but even in this brave new world, Silver was nothing short of a hero. As long as this dorky hedgehog is around to keep up the good fight, even the darkest timeline will have a silver lining. Yay! <laughs> all right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all, all right. possibilities. It's, it's time for a death, death battle! battle! And time! Pause. Okay, so... I think actually the silver is going to win, which, like, while that was my my thinking at the beginning, after Trunks' section, I was not so sure because <laughs> Trunks proved to be very powerful indeed. Um, but silver here, yeah, just um, a few things that make him stand out. So first, let's talk about Trunks. The main things that I had for him, like speed-wise, I was putting him at like what 29 quintillion times the speed of light, which you know is pretty fast. <laughs> It's, it's incredibly fast, um, but then with Silver, um, he wasn't as fast as Sonic in his base form. Like, base Silver, base Sonic, Sonic is faster. But when, like, base Sonic can already move faster than- I'm pretty sure base Sonic can move, like, faster than time. It's because he's ridiculous, right? Um, then, then I think that, like, where does that put Silver? Slower than faster than time? That's a pretty wide, like, margin. <laughs> like, you could, like, I mean, where, where does he fall in that, you know? It's like when people say, I could care less. Th there's, there's a lot. There's a lot <laughs> of room in there. So, I don't know. I don't know how fast he is in his base form. But at the very least, in his super form, he is faster than Trunks. Because if you are incalculably fast, then you're faster than 29 quintillion times the speed of light. Because you can calculate 29 quintillion times. Quintillion times the speed of light, you know what I'm saying? Um, so now for strength, then. We have, um, Trunks was able to beat that one guy in one sword slice. It was a special sword, mind you. I don't think we can attribute all of that to Trunks' power himself, like his innate power. I think part of that has to do with the sword that he was using, like the key sword or whatever, right? Um, but yeah, one slice beat the guy who was making black holes that was threatening, like, time and space. Um, and that's great. But, like, that is incredibly powerful. But, <laughs> then you have Silver, who was um, fighting something that, like, was eating time. Um, which, you know, is, like, I feel like that's already fairly comparable. Um, but beyond that, uh, what, uh, I forget exactly how it was phrased. But, like, there was this force that was comparable to the force that he used, like the Chaos Force or whatever, right? Um, that was destroying and rebuilding, um, you know, the whole Sonic multiverse, right? The whole Sonic universe, I guess you could say. Um, and they specified in this, so I'm hoping they weren't exaggerating, <laughs> but they specified in this that there were infinite timelines and infinite worlds and infinite characters. And so what that means to me is that the force that was being talked about there, that is comparable to the force that Silver uses, is infinite. Because if you're destroying infinity, then your power must be, you know, up to infinity and beyond. Right? <laughs> so, so that's what I'm thinking right now, is that as ridiculously powerful as Trunks seemed to be, um, to the point where, like, I... <laughs> I thought a lot of stuff was kind of left unsaid, or like, I don't know. Um, I, it just seems like Trunks has, or Silver has more stuff that's kind of just in that realm of impossibility, you know? Um, or again, with like that, that blast that was going to reset the entire thing, he survived it, 
at its epicenter. Granted in his super form, but we have no reason to believe that he wouldn't be able to access his super form in this fight. And so, you know, sure, maybe normal silver would not be able to handle trunks. Or, you know, like god trunks, like super saiyan god trunks, right? But I don't think that trunks has anything that could defeat um, super silver. Especially when you consider that, like... Um, Silver has like all of this control over time himself, that time cannot be taken, I guess, from inside of him. Um, that he's been decoupled from time. And I'm not sure if it's in the same way that like Goku Black was decoupled from time, where like if you kill him, he'll just exist somewhere else, you know? Like you can't, I don't, they didn't make it seem like it was that kind of thing with Silver. Um, more just like he wouldn't be erased by consequences of his own actions or something like that. Um, but all in all, I, yeah, I just think that Silver, Silver has this one, especially that Super Form. I do wonder about Trunks being able to like seal away Silver's power because I don't know exactly what that means in this case. <laughs> but that's, that's the only thing that comes to mind that I actually want to say Trunks has the advantage in. Um, because with um, Silver having like super speed, super strength, even if not as strong as Knuckles or as fast as Sonic, with him having his telekinetic abilities, with him having his control over time, his ability to like um, jump to planets or to different points in time or to different dimensions entirely, um, where he could just do that with such ease. You know, at the very least, that stuff is matched by Trunks, but I don't think that it's succeeded by Trunks. I think the Silver has more advantages here. I think it's just way stronger, more durable, faster. Trunk, wait. Trunks is going to lose, Silver is going to win this one, and play. I hate when you're flying and you just suddenly get shot at from behind. I always want to look back and be like, why are you doing this? Unsanctioned time trap. <laughs> Thank you for throwing in one line of story for me. This whole, like, throwing rock stuff doesn't mean anything in the context of these <laughs> massively powerful characters. You're popping super already? <laughs> and that's fair, Trunks. That's fair to feel that way. Ah, crap baskets. <laughs> Give me a good pull. <laughs> <laughs> good enough. Yeah. Was not expecting a card opening. Yeah. He just sends it back. Wow. It's a cool effect for sure. No, the Time Sword! It's not the Key Sword, but the Time Sword, Tapions. He went God, that's cool! Lots of cool, like, beam visual effects here in this fight. And there it is! they are. I don't think we're in Mobius anymore. <laughs> this is it, time hog. <sighs> the end of your future. Well.
Oh! Pretty rude. Oh. <laughs> well then. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> it is just it's over. Right past cooler than furry Kyle Reese. It is hard to imagine Trunks losing to anyone. However, Silver ironically had just about everything he needed to put the half Saiyan six feet under. First off, time travel wasn't much of a factor since they were both pretty well versed in it. Either yeah. way, Silver's psychokinesis could disrupt tech like the hero switch and the time travel armband, leaving Trunks without his gadgets and primary method of hopping through time. Let's be frank, in base form, Silver never stood a chance at matching Trunks with his own power. Even in his super form, it's questionable whether or not Super Silver had the physical ability to match Super Saiyan Trunks. Really? In short, it's oh. practically impossible to lock down exact numbers numbers and limits for their power levels. So Trunks could have probably taken a win if he found an opening, but Silver's psychic powers have worked around similar disadvantages before. Interjack was way stronger than him, could match the power of Supersonic, and conquered all of Mobius. But Silver could consistently Una reverse card his attacks back at him, and he wasn't even super at that time. The only thing Trunks they mentioned that I thought much faster than Goku's Well, the only thing I remembered was him throwing like a continent or something at Silver. Faster than light, maybe even more. And that is However, not the same as matching Supersonic his speed must have a limit, even if it is impossible to know an exact number given what we've seen. But Archie's super forms have consistently shown incalculable speeds. Sure, Goku broke through Hit's time skip, but that actually has nothing to do with speed. As explained by Whis, the effectiveness of time manipulation in the world of Dragon Ball depends on the difference in power level between the caster and their target. Mm. Such as when Kronoa attempted a time stop on Mira and failed, due to Mira's energy being stronger. Xeno vs. Goku has also mentioned how increasing his energy affects space and time around him. Oh. In any other matchup, this would be totally buck wild itself. But no, Archie Super Forms just have to break time itself. They are it's ridiculous. It's difficult to put an exact number on Trunks his maximum level of power. The strongest beings in his continuity can affect his entire multiverse, which has infinite timelines plus the crack of time outside. In contrast, chaos magic wielded by a super form like Supersonic can rewrite the infinite timelines in Archie Sonic's multiverse, plus the extra dimensional realms outside, like the Chaos Force, Pocket Zones, Mega Man's own infinite universe, and yes, possibly even a multiverse with Spawn. <laughs> the scope of Dragon Ball's cosmic scale simply does not compare. Plus, unlike Sonic, Silver spent many years being trained how to use chaos magic by the guy who invented it. Hell, I mean, if that's Mega fair, Man yeah. could rewrite reality just minutes after learning he could even use the chaos emeralds at all, imagine what craziness Silver could pull off. Trunks' best chance was the Key Sword's ability to nullify powers, like it did to Mechikabara. However, the Super Genesis Wave explicitly could not rewrite the presence of Super Sonic or Super Mega Man, despite being able to rewrite even the extra dimensional chaos form. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. Pain. It's likely Silver Super Form could resist the Key Sword, at least for a time. Hmm. Ultimately, while there are many versions of this battle where Trunks can win, Silver's superior abilities close out a victory more often than not. Cool. To make things brief, Silver was just hogging the spotlight. Hey. The winner is Silver the Hedgehog. Claps for Silver. Very cool, very cool. Hey, if you want more Death Metal ASAP, why not grab a membership? You'll All get right, you can do emails, that badges, if you chat, want. Live streams and a bunch of behind the scenes stuff. Just click that join button. Thanks for watching. You're welcome. And we've already seen this. This is, yeah, this is SpongeBob versus Aquaman. <laughs> Which, what a reveal that would have been to me. That would have been something. But all right, so, uh, okay, yeah. We can't talk about the next time because I already watched that. If you didn't see it, check my channel, SpongeBob vs. Aquaman. My reaction's there. Uh, so this death battle, I was right, yay me. Um, I definitely, though, did not... I didn't have a firm understanding of everything. Like, as firm of under... As firm of an understanding as I should have. I really thought that Super... Well, like, once Silver went Super, that it was basically over. But apparently... The Death Battle team themselves, they weren't even sure if Super Silver would be enough to, like, handle Trunks. And yeah, that genuinely surprises me because I thought that normal Silver 
would have already been like pretty powerful. I, I did think Trunks had the upper hand in that case, but I thought once it was super silver that it was just over. Apparently not. Um, and and when I was looking at, I mean, this is this is probably in part the reason why, right? When I was thinking about the relative strengths um, for silver, I basically was giving him infinite because of the whole like um, the chaos force or whatever and the fact that it was like wiping out and like rewriting infinity, right? But I didn't think about how <laughs> the the timelines on like in the Dragon Ball Heroes world or whatever are also infinite. I, I'm not sure how they are to be frank. Like, I guess I just missed that part because even like them saying it's infinite, I'm reaching back into the archives of my mind and I'm not sure about that. Like, yeah. The scrolls pop up when there are like discrepancies or whatever um, but the scrolls themselves are limited and so the infiniteness of the timeline you know like it must be rooted elsewhere but if 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 you have infinite elsewhere and then more are popping up but then there can only be so many more how is that infinite I I'm confused. <laughs> so I did end up guessing right on this one, but I guessed right for kind of the wrong reasons, you know, like I wasn't, I wasn't wrong. I just didn't have as full an understanding as I should have because I did pick up on like, um, you know, the biggest concern for silver would be the key sword. Um, I did pick up on like a lot of their stuff canceling out. I picked up on the incalculable speed, um, but it was um, mostly the power that I was, um, I wasn't getting right. I also didn't know that um, the super form on Silver's part had like a really small duration. So I don't know if that was mentioned and I missed it. That definitely happens. Um, but that wasn't something that I was thinking about was its duration. Uh, maybe just because I was like, even if it has a short duration, if you move at incalculable speeds and I think that you're as strong as infinity, Maybe that's why I didn't think about the duration, because you could just insta-win in most cases, <laughs> you know? But uh, this was not most cases, I suppose. So it's interesting to think about, but um, I'll give myself a single pat on the back. There we go. All right, cool. I think with my animations in general, I prefer to start with a lull. I don't really like... I just trying to think about, you know, my how I've reacted to things like, you know, battles when they started, um, you know, feelings I've had just over the course of all these death battles. I think in general, I appreciate it when they don't start with like a shot being fired because like that's what happened with this one. Silver was flying and like immediately there were key blasts being pelted at him, right? Um, to the point where I was like, oh, there's no story in this one, cool. And then there was, like, a single line of story with Trunks being like, ah, you delinquent, you're messing with time, and Silver's like, that's what I do, you know? Um, and so yes, there technically was a story, but it, I guess just because, like, in my mind, the fight had already begun, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's all I'll say about the story. I did enjoy the banter. <laughs> throughout you know with the the classic you know it's no use being brought up that was fun um the moment with trunks like opening a pack of cards was fun i don't know if that's how it works in dragon ball heroes i actually did play like dragon ball heroes world mission um for a little bit um because i was thinking like oh maybe i could speed run this no it turns out to be really incredibly long and you know it uses a gotcha system because it's cards and so you would need all of that stuff and so i there's no way there's no way i would do that um, but yeah, like I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the animation again, lots of really cool visual effects with like, um, all the different like beam attacks and everything. Uh, the rewind, like the skipping I thought was really cool. i uh, just, you know, time being messed with in general. Um, I just like the way that it came together. I don't think I have anything more to say about this death battle. I enjoyed it. It was a good time. And I'm glad for that because I was excited for this one. Um, I do wish that I had understood some things better for sure, but overall, I'm content with myself. Um, and with that, we have now officially caught up to Death Battle reactions because if you weren't aware, if you haven't been following, I was reacting to Death Battles as they came out and currently we're between seasons. Um, you know, the last episode that was released that I reacted to was Gogeta vs. Vegito. And here we are finishing off what I needed to do to catch up on the series as a whole. So I'm I'm proud of myself for having been able to, you know, follow through with my 
my resolution last year, basically, which was to react to Death Battle every week, you know? Um, and some weeks I even gave out two reactions. Um, like, it was, it was a lot of work for me, just personally, because of all of the, like, depression and anxiety and ADHD stuff that I go through. Um, you know, like, I'll, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this as a little triumph. Um, I am hoping that when the next season starts that I'll be able to just kind of continue on with it and, you know, keep uploading a video every weekend. Um, at this point, though, I will have to admit that it's not a promise. I'm not, I'm not going to promise that I will upload one every weekend. Um, I'm hoping that I, you know, will be able to. But more than that, I'm hoping that I can, I don't know, do something with my life. And that's been really complicated so far, really difficult. So I just, I, I just don't want to make any more promises right now. Like I have a lot of stuff that I need to just straighten out um, mentally and just personally. So yeah, uh, wherever our trails may lead us, I, don't know, I hope that you enjoy yourself, have a good time and whatnot, be happy and help those around you. So <laughs> let me know what you thought about this death battle in the comments below, whether you liked it, whether you disliked it, what you thought about this or that, et cetera, so on and so forth. And I don't know when the next time will be, but uh, assuming that there is indeed a next time, I look forward to watching it and I hope that you look forward to watching it with me. So yes, with that, we're calling it here. Have a good one, everybody.